Hi there. Today I'm going to show you my build of the Fokker Wolf here 190D from Hobby Game. It's the 850mm Fokker Wolf. And to wear this camera so I can free up my hands. Here is the model. I have done some preparations. Uh, I have pre-fitted some of the servos. I haven't glued them, just pushed them in place so far. Also, I have taken my ECS speed controller and put it in there. I haven't glued it, just put it in place. The powertrain for this build I have taken from my old Bixler. This is the original Bixler motor and I will be running it of three cells, so it will be way overpowered for this model, but hey, that will be fun. Problem with this motor is, it didn't fit the original motor mounts, which is just a uh, plastic piece there, a few millimeters thick. So I had to do some modifications, because I couldn't screw it from the other side, it's full of um, foam in there. So I built this uh, custom motor mount that can be bolted onto the motor and then screwed in there in, into the front. And I didn't have the proper screws available at home, and that would be M3s, so I had to make my own, and I will now fix those screws to the engine with some uh, Loctites. Here are the screws, it's just regu regular M3s. I have a long staff of uh, M3 that I have cut to size. I will be using, just got to make sure so I don't screw up. See here, that one goes like that, that one goes like that, and yeah, it is the narrow holes. Be careful, so I only get Loctite into the um, uh, so you don't get locked tight into your engine that would be disastrous I'll put a couple of washers screw on the bolts so you get tension and thus activating the Lock tight. Come on. Homemade screws can always be a bit tricky. There, firmly. I have placed the nuts. Our flesher, I will not. Yeah, screw it too deep into the engine. That will be a disaster as well. So here, if I put the washer in close, those three millimeters there is just enough. Getting the Loctite into the threads. the engine. Homemade threads like this always have small flaws at the top so it can be tricky to get the right thread in. There we are.
just tightening it so the Loctite can work its magic. Afterwards the uh, screws will put sit there quite firmly. So while that is curing I can go through my plants. See here. Also, the setup includes a yeah, thousand yeah, milliampere, twenty-five C zipper, three cell pack, and that is just enough size to fit there. We don't have much more to go with. The compartments will allow that maximum. See here. 37 wide yeah. millimeters that is yeah. roughly 72 millimeters deep or long and see here roughly 12 millimeters thick batteries. The inside of the canopy can be dug out for uh, more space for the battery but I would not recommend it. But this is roughly as large battery pack as you can fit into this compartment. I'll also need to get these server wires. I choose to have those sticking up on the top instead of the bottom to have a cleaner installation beneath. Uh, I'm also going to use a 3-axis gyro for stabilization. I intend to fly this craft uh, whenever and wherever so it will be handling some stiff winds and then a 3-axis gyro can be quite nice to have. All the servers I have used, three of them, are the um, XTH900 I think they're called, the standard 9 gram servers used by basically everyone and just cost a few dollars. So for now I'm going to stick the servers into place. And for that I'm just going to put a couple of dollops of uh, heat glue to make them stay where they are. Because they actually fit really nice just as they are. Pardon my shaky hands. So, it's a dollop here. I think I will be needing the next glue stick here. Yep, need more tension. So it's always tricky when you're just in between glue sticks. And these cables, we uh, will need to route them along the edges so not to be in the way for the battery pack because even these thin server wires will make the um, battery be too tall for the canopy bit of glue Put into the corner. Love this heat glue. Don't use it too much. Every dollop you use, you will add weight to your aircraft, and that's not always the side. And at last, a little dollop there. Oh. 
Always have a neat work environment, not like me, messy with tools everywhere. That's just an accident waiting to happen. Uh, by the way, this is my first build video. I haven't done any build videos before reason I'm making this one is because there weren't any of this particular aircraft. And I thought it would be nice to have one to share. Not in particular for me being a great builder, but more for you so you can see the innards, ins and outs of the model before you buy it. If you want to know what's involved, see here, I dropped the new glue stick. I'm not entirely sure if this new glue stick fits. Might be too large. Damn. Uh -huh. A few dollops of glue on the on this one as well. Now I should have a squeegee, I don't, so I use this heat shrink, which is pretty stupid because this glue is hot and that will make the tube shrink. But I think that's gyro now, or servo, now will stay in place. So I put the glue gun aside, back to the mouse mounts. Now oh, I guess the let's see here what's it called? This one the Loctite is at least partially cured. There we are. Let's see here. Notice I um, will be using two washers on the top side and one washer on the down side and that's there's a place diagon diagonally that will be giving the motor a right and down thrust. A adjusted thrust angle is usually needed to have the aircraft behave the same way on the thrust as in as in neutral. See here that will be the bottom side. Yeah, that was just about right. Oh, and now I have heat glue everywhere. A couple of washes. Uh, pre-drilled a hole so the axes don't get caught in the motor mount. Again, lock tight. You do not want the vibrations of your engine have your engine to come loose. That would be quite a disaster. an imminent crash. Uh, 
right now I'm careful not to screw these bolts into the engine that could permanently destroy the engine that's why I'm using my finger not so much to brace it as feeling if I turn the bolts and that one didn't nicely. Uh, now in the plastic compartments, uh, plastic uh, firewall mouse mounts, these three ho holes are new. Those are made for the bolts, the axle, if it would have been that long, but it wasn't, and the other bolts. Also made three new screw holes for uh, this three millimeter plywood and I carved a bit around here. Now I will use some glue around the edge just in case. Make sure you don't get glue on any of your and then pass as usual. Stick it in there and it fits like lucky like glove. Excellent. Then we have a couple of small screws. I did not expect these screws to hold the engine forever into the plastic pot but that together with the glue should be rock solid as well hot glue can be removed with a little patience and violence so though if this is semi-permanent installation of the engine it can be removed if needed Hopefully, I won't need to do that. As you can see, the engine is now pointing a few degrees to the right and a few degrees down. Might have be needing a bit more thrust angle, but, uh, well, I will survive. Worst case scenario, I have the gyros. Now this uh, speed controller, it's a 40 amp, total overkill for this. Uh, this is my cooling solution. It's used to overheat when pushing the bixler too hot. These are just some uh, components taken from a computer. See here, I will not Stick this permanently where it should be, yet. Taking out the... Oh! It's a bit tight down there with the edging cables. So, that's all to do it. You can still close the hatch. There we are. This is my teeny tiny FR Sky receiver without telemetry. I have already tested it and yeah, bind it to my transmitter. So let's see here. There we are. And let's see here. 
which one is which? That's the elevator on the starboard side, starboard side cable elevator there. See here, elevator, there you go. And the other one is rudder. Since I will be adjusting the uh, gain for trimming, I will, will need to be able to access these three screws. Also for reversing the action, you need to access those tiny dip switches. My whole plan for the radio installation is something see here. Like this. Which should give me more than enough room for this one. Absolutely. It's all in the clear. Double-sided tape is my one of my absolutely favorite tools. When it comes to electronic installations. Here we are, and I don't think I shall need to take down the uh, receiver. So here we are, three axis tire. Oh, it wasn't entirely straight, but okay, that can be adjusted later. Pretty neat insulation, right? Oh. Always put your cap on your glue and other stuff immediately. <clears throat> we'll do a dry fit of the wing. See here. There we are. Like a glove. And the battery fits exactly into the compartment. And if the weight and uh, what's it called? Uh, central gravity allows the light on, I will use this little thingy. It's a high pitched alarm for low battery warning. You just plug it into the uh, balance port. Watch out. Oh, wrong way around. Hope I didn't pry it. says minus there. If I... Yeah, share screen on all three cells. It will start beeping if it goes below 3.3 volts per cell. Let's see here, turning on the radio. Yep, everything's nice. That is one of the drawbacks of this particular gyro. I've been trying two of, two of them so far with different servers and they are jittering a bit. So let's see here. That was much. Well, it works please and it fits. I need to sort up 
these cables for a better fit of the canopy. So there. Checked. It works. Needs an half speed cable management. This is one good looking aircraft. I really like it. Next up are the tail feathers. One more thing. And we are back. Incoming phone call and a quick beer. Beer is good for the soul. Don't drink and fly. Or why drink and drive when you can drink and fly. Much more fun. So now to the tail feathers. I find this these a bit thin, a bit wobbly, but they ought to do the uh, trick. Feels like a, almost like a biscuit. Quite thin. I've been dry fitting these and through the um, through this gap and I had to carve or rather trim some material. Nothing real surprising there. Hmm. That's a bit off. Maybe I should look into that. And for the tail feathers, I have settled on using one of my favorite glues, since uh, it's in no real rush for this to dry. It's more important to have it nice, neat, and flush. So I'll start with putting the main wings on and bolt it this time. To have a visual reference of the angle for the tail feathers. One of the reasons why I choose this aircraft. I have the uh, Bixler powertrain and a bunch of uh, 9 gram servers laying around. I wanted an aircraft to suit this. And since I live in apartments with my fiancé, I do not have much space at all. So this aircraft is able to split into two and maximum length of what is it? 65 centimeters? Something like that. Which means it fits into a wardrobe. So, yeah, that's pretty nice. Where is the. I'm missing a part here. I'm missing. A piece of plastic that's supposed to be screwed together. A square piece of plastic. Let's see here if I can find it. Be right back. There are the screws. There are the plastics. Here are the parts. So now you do not want to add any glue to this bar. Uh, the way this is called electronic glue or something, it's a bit softer, but forgiving glue, and it can be removed as well. That will take some force. The trick with this glue to have it harden is 
I should rub it on both places. It activates, then you remove it. Oh, now wait a minute. It was the server horn that I was missing, and I have the server horn. I'm pretty stupid. So let's see here. Didn't need that plastic pot. So, wait, do you know? Just squeeze in here. So I'm applying glue to that part. Now it's activated. Whoops. Always cap your glue when you're done. Don't get any the glue on the back side of the back portion of the wing. So it's pretty sticky glue. Don't worry too much, it can be removed once it settles. Applying glue to the inside, activating it, and when it's sticky to the touch, but not uh, pulling off, it is ready. Careful to not get any glue on the metal parts. Squeeze in there. Oh, good enough. Yeah, right side. Actually, this piece of metal was mounted on the wrong side of the tail frame. Tail frame at arrival. right there. Uh, it's a bit off. If you can do anything about it. Maybe heating it a bit. Looking from the top. Looks pretty good. Oops. I thought what I was missing a square case of plastic, but it was just <laughs> the server horn was mounted on the uh, cleavers already. I think the best way to go about this is removing it from the cleavers, and hopefully it will not break. No, it happens. It wasn't pushed. All the way through. So let's see here. Screwing from the bottom side. I always 
loose my screws. I'm not a good builder. I'm not a very organized builder. Usually stuff works out in the end anyway. Don't ask me why or how. Then we have a tail thing. Should work. Looks pretty decent. Moving some of that glue that I accidentally put there. Got some glue on the fingers. But that's right now. Then we have the engine cowl. I suppose it's supposed to be this way for the yeah that way. It's a very nice and snug fit. This glue has a tendency to uh, be quite stringy, so try to keep your strings out of engines, moving parts and other stuff. It's very forgiving, but still not good to glue, glue your engine together. Uh, I'll let that rest for a while. This is a real nice airplane. Can't wait to made in it. Uh, to be honest, I pre-checked the um, sense of gravity. It seems pretty okay with even with all the extra hardware I have, because the extra hardware is in this general area. That is the uh, gyro and the um, low battery warning thingy. So now the engine cowl is placed. That is one slight mistake I did. When I put the uh, engine in place, I put it dead center, then angled it. Angled it. I should have placed it slightly up and right. That way, the propeller would have been sticking out dead center instead of slightly off center. So, there we are. Hopefully, that will work. The tailplane is in place. Let's hook up the uh, I usually go, go for the second to last uh, hole, if nothing else is stated. So let's see how the tail fits. Let's see here. I really don't need to unscrew that one right now. Huh? All I need to do is activate, oh, put the battery in. The um, ailerons aren't connected right now, but that's fine. before or rather the servo sensor before 
I will need to unscrew this until it's neutral. That's a long way. Or me, my... I'm silly. This is mounted backwards. Always the enthusiast, always rush, rushing things. Take it slow. Think it through. So much easier if you do it right and if you do it once. And now the servo is centered. So that means I need to screw this in quite a lot instead. The holes for the server horn should always be directly beneath the uh, hinge. So let's see here. It goes into the hole there. That seems about right. And I do love magnetic screws. And magnetic screwdrivers. This is so thin. Maybe I should put... Now that I'm sure it's supposed to be that way, I should put a bit of glue from the heat gun there. Nothing to permanent, just making it more sturdy. They are a bit noisy sometimes. So. Up, down, left, right. Whoa. So you just need to reverse the tail plane. There are a number of ways to do that, and right now the rudder elevator is on channel 2, so just inverse that. Up, down, excellent. Yeah, one, one other thing that I really need to make you aware of is the aileron hinges, or rather not hinges, the, um, the servo extension struts arms here. Yeah, they go through here. 
but those aren't properly glued in place. That means anything can happen when you push the rod. So you need to glue, glue these in place properly. I suggest you do it right around there. The question is heat glue, super glue, or another kind of glue. I'm not entirely sure. For this, initially, I'm going to get, go for heat glue and put it into the channel. Make sure you do not get it on the arm, because if you do, that's bad. You can get glue on the arm, that's bad. Okay. And now I did. That wasn't good at all. And remove excess. Okay, the uh, plastic actually went a bit bubbly with the extra heat here. That was a bad experiment and way too much glue. Let's see here, what can I use to get it out? Not very professional, is it? And never claim to be a professional. Just an enthusiast wanting to share. So there, looks like it's survived. And for the next one, how about we try a little bit less glue? Whoa, now I got glue on my pants. I got strings everywhere and my leg is starting to hurt slightly. That might leave a bad mark. Pushing it firmly into place. I can also seal this slight dollop and seal that slight dollop. Should use a squeegee. Um or out of squeegees. And here's my fiance. Okay. Increasing the gain quite a lot. Make sure everything goes the right direction. Engine to zero. Thrust driver to zero. Engines can be really, really loud. Left, right, up, down. Left, right, excellent. So, now for the test. Shoot. Okay, you need to increase the gain even more for it to be very obvious.
a grill sheet flap come up and slap the parts up the, the wrong way. Tail also wrong way, it goes with the wind, not against it. Tail is right. Goes up and should counter that. Increasing the sensitivity on wrong sum, reversing the runner and reversing the elevator. So right now, to the left. It will slap up when I take the right. Slaps up. So everything looks just the bike about right that the game is way too There we are. Just need a nice way to put those cables away. Basically just push it in there. Manage it will not mess up. The sub uh, the servos, yeah. Wrong attachment. Uh, that one's good for this. That's why I held the thing of that because it can get really loud otherwise. More or less like a uh, fire alarm system. So, best way to keep these cables away. Actually, I have no idea right now. Right now. Everything as low profile as possible. Oh, don't have don't check to hook it up by the way. Just want to check the center of gravity and we'll be more quiet this way. Higher flush fit. The battery is a bit too thick. I might trim it, trim the cowl down slightly in moments. So let's see here. Don't want to be rude. I have center of gravity. Actually, it looks like the center of gravity is, uh, could be more forward. This is just an estimation. The center of gravity at the moment is 50 millimeters. Oh, no. Let's see here. Four to two millimeters from the leading edge. Uh, that is with all the extras. Maybe I.